Hey everybody, Rob Borgel with Ballistic MG. In today's video, I want to talk just a moment about muzzle brakes and how they can reduce felt recoil. All the benefits they have to offer us that's commonly overlooked. So recently we wrote an article for Blue Press Magazine, and during this article, we took various shooters of all different skill sets and backgrounds, and we gave them the opportunity to fire side by side on shorter rifles that have muzzle devices on them. We started with the standard flash hider and then no muzzle device at all, and then moved into a variety of different types, and then numbered them one through 10 in our favorites. We isolated the two favorites and then side by side compared them again. And pretty unanimously, everybody picked the same muzzle device. So what's interesting is a lot of guys who had never really even used a muzzle device versus people who had never even fired an AR-15, as compared to somebody who's been doing this for 10 years, all agreed on the same muzzle devices and kind of numbered them the same as well. So this video should kind of serve as like a cliff notes to this article. So let's kind of break it down step by step. First, having a flash hider is going to reduce the signature of the muzzle flash at night. That's kind of an obvious thing. But that doesn't really do anything for me during the day. A muzzle break might actually increase the signature. Sometimes it even shoots fireballs off to the side, but it reduces my felt recoil. Now, felt recoil is very important because there's not just the recoil we feel, there's the recoil we perceive. And what that means is the first shot I fire on the, my buddy's 44 Magnum, for example, as soon as he hands it to me, I'm thinking, man, this thing's going to kick. And so I dip the nose before I fire, thinking it's going to kick a whole bunch. Then I feel how much it kicks. Then the second shot, maybe it's more or less now that my body knows what this recoil feels like. So there's actual recoil and recoil anticipation. And then there's perceived recoil, which takes place before that. Both of those can be knocked down quite a bit by having an effective muzzle brake. So a muzzle brake is designed to push that blast out to the side and pull the weapon forward every time I'm firing. This will reduce how much of that energy comes into my body versus being pulled forward by that muzzle brake. So let's kind of start in kind of my least favorite and move into my most favorite of the muzzle devices. So first, we've got this on the far left, and this is... It looks like a good design, it makes a lot of sense, but having tested it, we all agreed that it was really little to no effectiveness. It definitely pushed the blast out to the side given the three port design. The bleeders on the top didn't really seem to help anything. And in the end, we all kind of agreed, not our favorite. What I do like is they drilled out the bottom portion. There's a lot of guys who are moving their pistols into rifles or trying to get that 16 inch with a 14.5. And what that means is screwing this on the end of a 14.5, timing it correctly, and then pinning and welding in the bottom here. So the muzzle device already being drilled out kind of saves that operator uh, or that gunsmith an extra step. So that was well thought out, and I, I dig that concept. Next is the hyperfire. Now, this hyperfire muzzle device is nifty in a lot of respects that it reduces recoil at a really, really good rate. However, that hot blast that's being pushed out to, instead of the sides, it's being pushed rearwards towards the shooter. So Everyone unanimously reported that they did not dig this muzzle device. As far as recoil reduction goes, it was way up high, incredibly effective, but the muzzle blast really directed that energy towards the shooter. So a lot of guys decided against this one. Next, this is the Silencer Co. ASR. And this ASR is designed as a suppressor adapter. So what's interesting is when you get into the suppressor game and you want to have an effective silencer and blah, 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 and then you want to have a good muzzle device and mounting system so it doesn't come loose or lock on. And I really feel like Silencer Code did a great job with their ASR system. It locks on, it doesn't come loose, and it rarely locks onto the weapon where you can't remove your suppressor. In addition to that, the recoil reduction is quite impressive given this design. There's some that I think are slightly more effective, but the silencer gets stuck on the end of the weapon. So all in all, I think as far as muzzle devices and silencer adapters go, I think Silence Co. really nailed it with the ASR. I'm going to hop now over to the Surefire. So Surefire, historically, I think they've made really, really high quality muzzle devices. And you can see that there's the three port design. You can see there's bleeders in front of the three port design, which is kind of a cool concept. Um, I, I find this to be extremely effective. The problem is that the shooter does feel it a little bit in the sinuses, especially on some of the shorter weapons. It's a bit uh, overwhelming of a muzzle blast. But there's a lot of great design features, such as the wrench flats on the forward side for removing. And like before, they actually drilled out that portion on the bottom so that you could go from a 14.5 to a 16-inch barrel when you pin and weld. So a lot of good ingenuity behind the Surefire muzzle brake. This is the LWRC. And this has been a phenomenal muzzle brake, kind of like the initial one. It's got bleeders up top, 
but this thing is incredibly effective and I can tell you that I don't really feel it in my sinuses. It's not quite as annoying to the neighbors. And then you see you've got massive wrench flats running the whole side. They didn't drill out the bottom, but it, I still find this to be extremely effective. And this is more of a four port design, uh, which, you know, the more I'm dabbling in muzzle brakes, the more I'm finding those four port ports are highly effective. Lastly is the precision armament. And you'll see this one on the end of my M16 here. Uh, obviously I screwed this onto the end of my machine gun because it really helps with muzzle rise and helps keep the weapon steady during full auto fire. Again, you'll see that this is a four port design and up top, these are not bleeders. They're drilled out so that if you wanted to finish that drill hole and make it into a bleeder, you could. Uh, I personally don't, I like it just the way it is. This also times kind of funny. Unlike the rest of these guys, which work on a crush washer, so you tighten them into place so that they're just right. This one, you actually have a washer and the muzzle device. So you tighten it on, back it off enough so it's level, and then back this into place. And it comes with a spec sheet with all the data and the wrenches that you can use there, specific wrenches for tightening everything down. But in the end, everyone agreed that this precision armament muzzle device called the HyperTap was just above and beyond all of its competitors. There was a close match between it and what's called a tribe, uh, tribe manufacturing, designed this thing called a CIB. And that was also highly effective, but once we put them side to side, this one shined just a little bit above the other guy. We revisited this later on after the article, and we found that when we looked at special purpose rifles or shooting from the prone, that the tribe actually did shine better than the HyperTap in a, in a handful of ways. Uh, in the end, we kind of decided if you're going to be doing precision rifle work, if you're going to be on the ground kicking up dust, that the Tribe CIB was really a solid contender. If you're going to be off the ground and clearing rooms and you don't need to worry so much about the dust report, then the HyperTap really outshined all of the other competitors. So I hope this sheds some light into some concepts behind muzzle devices, and maybe they're worth investigating for yourself to reduce felt recoil or perceived recoil. If you like this video, found it educational, want to hear some more videos like this, please leave us a comment in the comment section be below. Also, keep in mind that the algorithm doesn't like us talking about firearms and muzzle devices. So if you can like and subscribe, it really helps us defeat that non-2-way system that's in place. So stay safe, keep training, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.